It is a very overwhelming, uh, overpowering mm. film, and I think all of us are touched and uh, choked at many places, particularly the end. Uh, he says in the film in one place that uh, he should not be there to see any injustice and today uh, I think it is a happy thing that he's not there to see Ayodhya, he's not there to see Godra, he's not there to see so many other things. While watching the film we also remember that what all they did for us and are we doing even a drop of it to retain the sanity and the peace of the country. What a film, what a performance, what a life. And what a message. I think um, it's a very special day today to have Tushar Gandhi with us, who is the descendant of the family. Many thoughts jog in my brain, many thoughts run in my heart, but it can all wait. Maybe uh, he can tell us what thought process he's going through, what is it that he sees that we as audience and as outsiders were not able to see. And then maybe after he has explained what is going on in his heart and in his mind, uh, we can, if everybody is in the right mind frame, to take uh, questions from the audience. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I must have seen this film uh, no less than about 30, or I, I've lost count, but at least 30 times. And uh, not once, has it not touched some chords in my heart? It, uh, it's always uh, been a very emotional experience. I don't know why it keeps happening after so many times being exposed to it, but it does happen. There are a few instances where uh, the film moves me. Uh, one is, uh, and it's very strange, because they're not family connected instances only. One of the uh, scenes which uh, is really very emotional is, of course, the massacre at Jallianwala Bagh. But even more than that, uh, the brutality at Dharasana, the brutality by which, uh, with which the British reacted to the non-violent protest at uh, Dharasana Salt Works is something that I have never been able to uh, be aloof from. I just can't understand how that kind of uh, brutality could have been practiced without any remorse, without any compunctions, and how, what kind of people there must have been at that time who, in the face of that brutality, did not flinch. Today, when we see policemen and armed policemen lining up the roads, we decide to take a detour. Even when there are protests, the leadership vanishes when the lathis come out. And here were ordinary people who just kept on accepting that brutality with absolutely no concern for themselves. That I still can't understand how, what must have been that passion must have driven those people of that time. And I'm thankful that we had a generation of those people in this country 70, 80 years ago. Uh, you said you've seen the film 30 times or more. Almost. And every time it moves you. And every time I'm sure, because according to the age group that you're watching the movie, there are new insights mm -hmm. and new observations. So what is the new insight you got today while watching the movie? You know, it's it's very strange the things, the kind of things that you see and you get inspired by, and to uh, the filmmaker's point of view, not only the philosophy or the message of the film, but the filmmaker's point of view. I was wondering about how Lord Richard Attenborough must have managed it. You know, in the days when there was no CG, the amount of crowd scenes that he has packed these films with. And those were actual crowds. They were, there was not a single special effect in this film. Wherever he saw, showed people, actually there were those numbers of people in those scenes. Whether it is the funeral procession winding down the Rajpath, or it is the platform of uh, Motihari, 
or it is the dandy coat. And I, have, I, you know, today I was looking at it from that point of view, and I said, how must that man have managed to take such perfect shots with no jarring element at all, not a single person behaving in a manner different than what that situation must have wanted or what that situation in originality must have been. So today that was what, uh, that was an insight that I got. Just to uh, brief our uh, members, uh, when Gandhi was being planned by Richard Attenborough, uh, the television actors, the theatre actors, the cinema actors, the cinema uh, technicians were all extremely happy because everybody knew about this very ambitious project that was being planned and how uh, everybody wanted a small uh, part of the pudding because it meant that they were going to be hired for a number of months which means all uh, without work actor were going to have the fires running and Nasiruddin Shah was auditioned for the role of Gandhi and I think he was devastated when uh, they gave it to Ben Kingsley and he, I remember, gave a very um, angry comment in the media where he said the foreigner is going to sit on his haunches and he's going to learn to speak the language. But when you watch Ben Kingsley, you forget Nasir's remark and you forget everybody and everything. He's just perfect for the part. Yes, he was. But we must remember that there was, in Ben Kingsley, there was Karsan Banji, the Saurashtra Indian. He, 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 he was the son of a mixed uh, marriage, born and brought up in England, but uh, his real name is Karsan Banji and he has very deep Indian roots also, although nothing to take away from his acting brilliance because uh, I don't think anybody else could have disappeared so efficiently into that role and brought out the character without a single trace of the actor himself, you know, the director and the actor must have really worked hard on achieving that effect where in certain scenes you start believing that it is Gandhi. Bapu himself who is on the screen and you're watching him. But I must warn over here, this film was not history. This film was not a document of history. This film takes a lot of liberties with history. So please, please understand this while seeing these films and films of these types that these are cellulite versions of those times they are not historically accurate there were a lot of things that he had to take uh, liberties with because he had to fit them into a three three and a half hour uh, format for celluloid so history was sacrificed for the sake of cinematography or cinematic uh, depiction of the life of Mahatma Gandhi and so many things were periscoped, many things were brought forward and very sadly many things were omitted also from uh, this film and that also was because uh, while it was being scripted uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi had a very very strong influence on uh, the filmmaking and so you will notice that the Bose brothers have vanished from the scene on this in this film. If you look at this film, you feel as if the Bose, Subhashchandra Bose and Sarat Chandra Bose did not exist. 